So again, we have a construction line giving us the slope of our stair. Um, you know, that's drawn just as a typical AutoCAD line, so that's not difficult to put in place. And then we look at the extended modeling tab on the structural elements panel, and we have a macro for straight stairs. I need to double check my snaps are proper. Looks good. So we'll want to set this to be uh, the default method, which will give it the two points. We're going to find a point at the end of the line and another one up here. And then we have an option whether we want this to be on the left side, the right side, or in the middle, and we're going to choose to go down the middle of the line. So it takes a couple seconds because it's building quite a bit of parts and pieces, uh, but again, all automated. You can see what it laid in. Let me zoom back a little bit. And we can adjust it right on the fly. So again, macro driven, you're, you're going to see these boxes, you'll, you'll get used to them. Um, and there's different settings that we can go through. So I'm going to first look at going to the step general. And for tread type, you see there's quite a bit of different types. If anybody has used AutoCAD structural detailing, you'll know that this was one of the pain points of that program. You couldn't really tr change the tread type not quite as easily as this. So now if we come in here, maybe we want to type 7. I'm going to go to tread dimensions 1, and you can see now the shape of the 7, and we can actually make some of these changes as well. So I might make the tread width 11 inches. And the front length, I'm going to set it to 0, so there's no overhang. The back length, we'll set that to 7. So now we kind of have our typical 11 by 7 stair. The bending in the back, in one of these radiuses, we'll just set that to 90, so it'll be a straight vertical plate. I'm also going to look at things like the step at the bottom. I'm going to say to make that the same as other steps. You see there's a little bit of a pause, not just on your side because it's a webinar, but because when you click that button, it has to do quite a bit of thinking to figure out exactly what you're entering in there. Look at the landings. You can see that it'll create the landings. Let me zoom over to the landing area. And you can set some of these as well. So maybe you want to have a, a grate at the top landing. Cover that. And again, you can set all these values in here. So it's very powerful. It's, it's, it's in real time. It allows you to leave and re-edit. Again, if you look at the large box around the outside, this is the stair as, as a whole. And you can come back in there and make set, any edits that you may need to do. Uh, once the stair is created, you can also easily modify the properties of it, changing sections of the stringer and those types of things. Uh, let's look at adding in railings on that stair. So this is one that's been built and cleaned up well, and we'll go ahead and add some railings to it. So we have a, also on the extended modeling tab, structural elements, we have a railing command. And the nice thing about this that's very powerful compared to other softwares is you can pick multiple objects to place this railing on. So if we had a need to put railings on all sides of this uh, platform, we can do that without having to put a rail per beam. We could select all of these rails that I'm touch or beams that I'm touching and have the rail continuous along that, which is really nice when we start talking about the corners and the bends. Having it all as one continuous rail allows you to, it sees itself essentially. So when it gets to a corner, it knows it's in a corner. And when it gets to a bend, it knows it's in a bend. Um, and it can then respace the, the, the post accordingly. Let me pick the stringers here. 
It's a little picky. You got to pick the objects you want. Uh, hit enter. And then it wants to get you uh, to start and end points of your railing. And that's where you want to use the node snapping for that. So if we zoom into there, we'll find the node snapping. Let me turn off endpoint just to make it have to go to the node. There it is. And then we'll find it up at the top. And I'm going to say no to this. And again, give it a few seconds. It has quite a bit of stuff to think about. And it looks like I picked something wrong, so it didn't quite attach. That's all right. It's over here. And you'll see the railing is able to be placed in with different types of connection plates, whether you want these bolted or welded, whether you want it welded directly to the stringer itself. All of those are options that you can place when you look at the railing macro. Yeah, here it is. So you can see when you're looking at the different posts, the different handrails, we have ways to handrail at the end, how you want it to look, end of the handrail, returning loop, that type of setting is available to you. Uh, these are all things when I work in Revit, we get these types of questions, how can we add this? And then you're talking about, well, you got to build a family that's a special picket and get that loaded in, in advanced deal. Those are all just parts of the program that you can load in and, and use as you needed. So between the stair macro and the railing macro, we have some very powerful tools for getting your circulation items placed.